So this guy saw, according to him, um, very well dressed, six or seven Muslim men for weeks at a time, uh, going around that, that, that house there and then going to eat and coming back and in and out of the house. Uh, but he didn't say anything because he was afraid he'd be labeled a racist. Absolutely. And see, you know, we've seen this before. Uh, in the Fort Dix jihad uh, plot several years ago, there were six Muslims who were going to go into Fort Dix and shoot up as many American, kill as many American soldiers as they, as they could before they themselves were killed. And they were discovered by a young man who worked at a video store. Right. They went to take their jihadi videos to be transferred from VHS to DVD. Right. And he saw it all and realized it was very alarming. And he went to his boss and said, should I call the police? Or would that be racist? Yeah, crazy. And, you know, it's the, this is what American Islamic advocacy groups have done to us over the years, made us think that resisting jihad terror is tantamount to being racist and bigoted against Muslims. CARE, for years, has tried to stigmatize any resistance to jihad terror. They say that it's all racism, bigotry, and Islamophobia. They've resisted every counterterror measure that's ever been proposed or implemented. They tell Muslims not to talk to the FBI, and they try to convince them that any counterterror effort is just an anti-Muslim initiative to stigmatize and demonize Muslims, when actually what they're doing is trying to stigmatize and demonize resistance to jihad.